The following production is part of the We Be Geeks Podcast Collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. It is me. I am back again. I don't, I don't know why I'm talking that way. <laughs> Philip's looking at me like I'm insane. <laughs> well, you know, I am a bit crazy. Uh, so the insanity plea, I will I will go with that. Uh, I will I will admit, uh, you know, a bit insane. A you sounded crazy. a little bit like Mr. Doubtfire. Hello! Hello! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I will take that, and I will run with it, and I will run the bases, and I will come back home again. I don't know. <laughs> That reminds me of a George Who's Carlin show. Well, uh, there, did you ever hear the George Carlin thing? It's like the difference between football and baseball. No. And it's like football basically gets and says, I will, I will fight you for 10 yards trying to get a touchdown as I battle through every defender in the way. In baseball, the object is to run home. <laughs> uh, it's really funny when you hear his whole bit on it. I'm like, oh, well, if you're one who was a baseball fan, not a football fan, I guess you're going <laughs> to be offended. But, you know, it's all in good fun. Uh, but anyways, yes, I am your Spartan. Pain Jeremy, and of course with me again, Floss Boy Philip, as we've already heard from him today. Hello. We've got so much stuff to talk about today. Uh, one of, of course, the big things to talk about is, do you realize next weekend is free comic book day? Free! Free! One of my favorite holidays. Although I, I guess technically it's not like a holiday holiday. Well, no. But uh, I, I will count it. Well, sure. I will count it as my blessings of the free comic book day. Uh, we also had the thing called CinemaCon that happened uh, last week, so there's a lot of big kind of movie news when dropped. Uh, I think I got some new game stuff that I found out about this week. Uh, and it's all coming up for you here on the Fandom Nexus, so make sure you stay tuned. And hey, make sure you tell your friends. If you have a good time hanging out with us, tell your friends about it and share it with them. And so we can all have a fun together. That is, that's part of what the Fandom Nexus is, is we all get to come together and just have fun. And we want to make sure everybody gets a chance to share in the glory of the fun. The Fandom Nexus. The Fandom Nexus. Oh, indeed. <laughs> wow, that microphone works really good for a distance for you. It actually sounds really good, i got to say. There you go. That thing, I mean, is this sounding pretty good? Normally, you know, like this one, in order to get the nice, good sound, I, I hold this one. I am get pretty close to it. I don't have to be that close to it, but I, I, I want to be quiet and intimate with it because that microphone will pick me up from you over here. You want to be intimate with it. That's well, interesting. that microphone, if I pull this one away, you can still hear me in that microphone over there. And so I try to hold it close so I can be close and intimate. And there hello. you go. Plus, I sound better this way. It's a little bassier. It's a little bassier. And I'm, I know I sound super sexy. Hi, ladies. Hey. I am married, though. Sorry. <laughs> but then again, you know, you, you, you hear the voice, and if the voice sounds nice, then you see a picture of me, and you're like, oh, gosh. <laughs> but, hey, you know, if you'd like a drawing of me on a T-shirt... I've been I've been working on uh, and I I think I was talking to you I, I need to get some T-shirts done up because yes. I'm about to attend NarthexCon June 11th. Anybody by the way in the Missouri area, if you're familiar with that story show, uh, we've actually had James Kennison on the show from that story show. He's in St. Louis. He's doing yeah, it's it's almost like a little convention, but it's basically they're gonna they just want to invite people to record their podcast live. They call it NarthexCon, and I'm planning to attend because it's a free thing. And I figure when I show up, I want to be wearing a new shirt. That is current because I don't have any Phantom Nexus shirts. And when is this North uh, this thing? June eleventh. June, June eleventh. I've got a registration for two people for Heather and I to go. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know if I can add a third person if you wanted to come with us. Actually, I believe I'm. Um, it's a Saturday, and I'm hoping to get back before you know. It seems Sunday. like there's something going on on that day. I can't remember what it is. Well, I know North Con, That's what's going on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I've been working on some shirt designs. In fact, I could use maybe some some people's opinions. I've done a few different things with some previously done artwork, and some of it is like Philip has already drawn me in a He-Man pose and. 
also a Captain America thing, and I'm reusing those. Uh, I'm going to ditch the castle design that I've had for a long time because I, I don't know what Disney got after me for between the castle or calling myself to Disney and beyond. So, yeah, I don't know which one was the one that infuriated them the way they, they did a cease and desist on my uh, shirt. So I'm doing a shirt that doesn't have any. There's no mention of Disney. There is no mention or no picture of any castle. You'll either have me in a He-Man pose or me in a Captain America pose. I'd like to have some more pictures and have like you on there. I've been working on some of you a little bit, but I don't know what kind of hair you want or whatever. Have been. Well, normally my hair is even shorter than it is now, and I have that really short hair. I think so. Um, but I've done stuff for it's a, a Spider Pan, the Lost Boys of Neverland. That's yeah. kind of fun, and also ones to just say the Phantom Nexus. I'm going to make those shirts available. Uh, but if you uh, happen to follow us on Facebook I, or Instagram at uh, Neverland Podcast, you can find uh, these, these pictures and tell me what you like best about one, and then maybe you know I'll you know might make a whole new different thing. I might even have several different versions of different shirts I'll put out. Uh, but we do have a shop. If you go to the website, NeverlandPodcast.com, in the, uh, there's a menu that kind of goes underneath the emblem that will say shop, and it'll take you right out to our Public page, and you can find some fun little logos, get them on shirts, get them on, I think, mouse pads. I think you can put them on a coffee cup if you want to. I mean, oh, don't say a mouse pad. Disney might get on to you. <laughs> oh, I know. I said mouse. Yeah. Uh, but we have all kinds of different things and a lot of fun things available. That's at, a mouse trap. <laughs> yeah, indeed. So that is coming in. But oh, I've got a, uh, as we get into our host chatter segment of things, I have to tell you all this crazy stuff that just happened to me just a little bit ago. Because this is scary, I mean, um, so uh, I, I've been able to work from home, and I work from home two days a week, and then I'm in the office in St. Joe three days a week, uh, which, and it's quite the drive. It's, it's getting very costly. My, uh, my gas budget is getting blown up. Uh, with, you know, we all know about that, so we don't have to get into it too far. Uh, but when I work from home, I use a Google remote to remote into uh, my computer at work. So as long as my computer at work is turned on, I can, I can get right in, and I can do my work. Well, I was trying to work on grabbing some files for uh, some hearing place or whatever. We need to uh, update and add and add a Best of St. Joe logo to it because we have this thing we run through the TV station of like some Best of St. Joe. And so people can vote what their favorite automotive place is and what their favorite this is and that is and that kind of thing. And so they want to put a logo up to get and try to encourage people, of course, to vote for them for Best of St. Joe. So I was going to you know, grab the files out of the archives, put them on the, the desktop PC at work. And then I could work with it and do a quick video edit and get it all done. Well, as I'm sitting there trying to reply on an email saying, oh, hey, well, I'm, I'm pulling it from the archives. I'll, I'll get something to you and I'll see what I can do. It's like my cursor was moving on its own. And it went down in my signature thing and it kept fighting me. Like I would, it would come down and I was like trying to like, it would delete letters or I'd end up typing things. And, uh, you know, I have a signature file where it's got, you know, a different type of text where it has my name of creative services, KQ2 or, you know, KQTV, something like that. And I kept moving the cursor back up and trying to type my sense and it kept moving around. I said, what is going on here? So I was like, you know, let me just send this email. And it, my name had gotten deleted out of my signature and I didn't get to finish the sentence. And I was like, what is this? And I minimized my email program after I see something's gotten archived. Then something else got deleted of my emails. I get out to the desktop and it's almost, you know, when you when you pass by your icons with your mouse icon or your, with your yeah. mouse cursor, you know, it kind of lights up as it's kind of highlights. Woo, woo, that's just everything's just kind of highlighting on the desktop and just going all crazy. And I said, that's weird. That's that doesn't look right. And I had a hard time. I have a thankfully I have a button right on the on the desktop to do a restart to that uh, our, our tech guys set us up with. So I can just click that. And that's probably the only reason I was able to get the thing to restart. Which, unfortunately, I was in the middle of copying all those files off of our archives. But I was like, well, I don't know what was going on here. Something lo looks like somebody has an independent mouse that I can't see and is moving around. And they kept opening up my browser and just messing around. Like like some five-year-old kid or whatever who's figured out how to mess around. That kind of thing. Yeah. And it might be, you know, it was around 3 o'clock. I'm like, these kids are getting home from school. Maybe because kids, they learn how to do this kind of thing. And it seemed like a kid's playing around thinking they're having a good time. Look, I hacked into a computer over at TV. Ha, 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 ha. Well, I restarted the computer. I came back and I said, okay, well, this, maybe there was just something wrong with the computer. But then it starts happening again. So I, I, I put it into restart. They obviously didn't know, you know my password, but it only seemed to do it when I was remoting in. So I contacted our IT guy, Bobby, and he goes down and he logs into the computer, doesn't have a single bit of problem. Uh, now, the thing is, is uh, when I started there, he was busy. So I've been using my own personal Gmail account to kind of. You know, I, I have access to that, and I use that for a remote logging in. 
and he wants to set me up with a, use my KQ2 as a Gmail thing. He didn't get a chance to set that up before. And I would use that for remote logging in to see if that makes a difference. But so I, I figured, okay, well, this, this is something on me that I need to be doing. So I go and I check, you know, on, on Gmail, you can check to see anything that's logged in with your, your stuff. No, nothing, nothing has logged in with my Gmail that, that uh, I didn't know. And I went ahead and I changed my Gmail password just in case. Okay, but nobody's logged into my Gmail, so I don't know how they could get into remote thing other than on that on the computer at work, there's a specific password you would have to use to remote into it. Somebody might have hacked that. Which, that, I mean, that's nothing to do that I can do. That's something not definitely still on Bobby's end, I would figure. I'm going to have to talk to him tomorrow and see how I'll let him know. It's like, hey, I've, I've checked on mine. My stuff's clean. So, I mean, we can, we can change whatever we need to, but... Uh, he doesn't like that I'm using my own personal equipment to, instead of using work equipment to get logged in. It's like, well, I, I've got this tiny laptop that, that the work gives me. I can't see the screen. It's really small. It's a lot smaller than this laptop I'm here. I'm using this my personal laptop. But I have a, my desktop PC. I have a big enough screen. I can edit. It matches the screen size that I have at work, so it's a lot easier to work with. Um, but he wants me to use the, that laptop. But I have nowhere I can set that laptop down to be able to hook it into like a bigger monitor so I can see it or plug my mouse in. I just don't have any space. So that's that's going to be tricky, but we got to figure this out. Because, uh, but I think it's somebody who's got to be able to hack from from the with the work, the logging, you know, logging in there. They can't be getting in through my Gmail, yeah. Because I've checked, there's nobody getting in there but me. So, but that's just darn scary. But like, dude, people don't don't mess around with stuff. There yeah. are nasty people out there in that world. That's yeah, terrifying. Man. It is, yeah. Because like, who knows what this person could get to within our archives and just go around and think of they're being fun and deleting things. Yeah, you can not only mess up someone's work, but you can actually mess up something very important. Yeah, uh, they, he could have really, you know, this, whoever this is, he, she, whatever they are, uh, could have really mess up things. At, but I think they think that's fun. That's like some sort of stupid prank. Because it seemed like a kid, because they were just like, woo, look at me. <laughs> yeah. The way it was wiggling around. It seemed like some dumb kid messing around, thinking they're being cute. It ain't cute, kids. <laughs> Parents, if you're hearing this, check, make sure what your kids do. Kids get technology handed to them way too soon. They learn how to do things that we would not have thought of doing when we were kids. I mean, that's and that everything runs on this technology now, and that's just kind of the way of the world. But I didn't want to bring the show down. But I just like this was an interesting thing that just happened to me today while trying to work. Yeah. And I tell you what, y'all, you got to watch it. And I, and I, I need to figure out how somebody's managing to do this, and because they had to have gotten over. And it's a complicated password that Bobby sets for being able to get into my work computer. Yeah, uh, through a remote access like that. And but how normal with remote access, you know, if if if, if I move the mouse, and if I'm working remotely from home, I move my mouse. You could actually see my mouse move on the screen at work if you were watching my screen. Hmm. Or, and likewise, if somebody moves the mouse around, I normally can see the mouse. So if how somebody gets in there where I don't see their mouse, but I see everything highlighting, that's, I don't, that's scary. And I don't know if I can trust now to get any work done. All right, we pause for a minute because Philip is sneezing. Oh, <laughs> there we go. I'm sorry. There we go. I just muted your mic for a little bit. But anyways, so normally, of course, what we do with host chatter, this is kind of fun, so... I've got what have you been watching, and I, I got a few things I can mention. I guess I've been watching, but I found a YouTube channel, and I don't know if this is their official at all. But it was it's called the Hee Haw Warehouse. Oh. So I've watched some episodes of Hee Haw, and I had not realized how long Hee Haw had been running because I oh, was yeah. watching an episode from like 1969. Oh yeah, I was on a long time. Yeah, and it ran up until like 1999. I think, or I think I was seeing there, there's. I mean that 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 show ran for like forever like 30 years i know it was it was uh it was at least 25 i remember them having the 25th anniversary mm -hmm. or something like that and it, it it seemed like it was it went off somewhere around then but uh yeah but i could be wrong uh i'm pretty sure it was around that time because i remember watching the last episode with my father but i just don't remember when yeah. i don't remember the exact year but I remember he was kind of sad because he'd been watching it for so long. Yeah. And I'm not even like a country music type like person, but it was a fun to watch. But yeah, he yeah. loved it. Um, we loved a lot of that. I remember Goober was on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Goober came on. Oh. I think that he actually was pretty much in character as Goober when oh, he, he came was. on the show. <laughs> he, he was just on there as George Lindsay, you know. Yeah, George Lindsay. George, and he had his name legally changed to Lord George L Goober Lindsay because uh, <laughs> he went on there and took the hat on. Yeah, and, uh, you know that was a the jughead had it's pretty much what I call yeah, it. Well, yeah, it was a it was a um, oh what they call them? They were um, well, they were really um, they were um, part of a fedora. 
that kids would take and oh, and they cut it up. They cut out the the middle part ah. and they take the the part, you know, the part off that would. And they what would happen is the kids would cut them up because they started selling these pins. We talked about it yeah. before. Yeah. They, they sell these pins and um, they would they would pin them onto the middle of it there. And uh, you know, Jughead was one of those kids, the the, the fallback of the of the. Uh, yeah. The, the World War Two days, yeah, and so that's what so that's what happened was they would take their dad's old fedoras that are worn out, and there'd be holes in them, and so that, that's how the holes came in the, the top of the hat. You see them on yeah. some of those, and you know you saw Goober, you yeah. know he had those. So eventually they started cutting them that way. They became so popular, kids would start cutting them, kind of like kids did with their jeans, yeah. you know. <laughs> and now, the, by the way, forgive me if you buy them this way it's just so stupid people like oh, i'm gonna spend more money to, to buy messed up jeans and and well heck you're starting to pay pay more for less material on a lot of different things <laughs> oh heavens the murder troy um uh, we're gonna sound like grumpy old men and I that's not that's not man. the that, that's not the nostalgia we aim for <laughs> I, I am a grumpy old man I, I don't mind i mean i'm not that old but uh, with my body, it is, I'm pretty much that old. So, yeah. <laughs> Another thing that I watched this week is, uh, and we talked about this, that uh, Paramount Plus was going to show, and that they've recently, you know, uh, 4K'd it and everything, the new director's cut of Star Trek The Motion Picture. I sat down and watched that one. And uh, it was funny because I had seen on YouTube where the, the, someone was kind of a uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, the staring contest movie. That's because, how it was in the one I already had. You yeah. Know, the, the, and everybody was staring. But I thought maybe they would have cut that down. They didn't. No, you can't. It, I don't feel like they made that movie any better with this new cut. Because I told you, I had the the extremely long edition already. Yeah. And I've had it for a long time. Well, I thought this, this was supposed to be a shorter edition. I would have been in my thought. No. Because you could cut off most of that movie and it would probably only run about an hour and a half. I don't think you can make that a non... <laughs> I mean, the thing is, is in there... Def- I don't think there is a defense for this, but <laughs> yeah. it was supposed to be a TV yeah. uh, show that they turned into a movie... And then they made that into a long thing. And they, they also didn't have time to edit it, even. They had to get yeah. it done. Boom, boom, kick well, it yeah, out to the theater. They had a, as they'd already scheduled a release date. Yep. And they didn't have a script complete because Gene right. Roddenberry kept passing back and forth between Alan Dean Foster. And they'd keep taking mm-hmm. changes. So they'd get onto the set and they wouldn't know what they were filming today. So they would say, all right, everybody stare to the view screen and react. And we'll just let the visual effects and, department do and, stuff. And, and they didn't even really know what they were reacting to. They're not, yeah, they didn't they're know what like, they were looking at. They're, they're just they're, staring at it. And they're like, oh yeah, oh who ah, uh. and and oh there there's a a big uh, thing that you're seeing and it's 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 amazing and it's, it's like, oh wow no, it's, you've never ooh. seen it before yeah and well thank you Leonard Nimoy the greatest he is because you know he was probably the most uh, mesmerizing one in it because I mean Spock yeah. Spock isn't supposed to have great reactions anyway so he's the one who's most obviously awesome because Spock's not supposed to go. Wow, he's supposed to just mm, mm, mm. fascinating. <laughs> of course, and then there's the, the great late DeForest Kelly. How yeah. can, he's great no matter what he does. He he, he goes, uh, they drafted me. <laughs> so yeah, they sucked him on the ship and he didn't want to be there. Like, what have we done? I retired, Jim. Yeah, he goes, they were dra-. He comes in with this, uh, looks like a jumpsuit. Yeah, thing, with a big the, collar, like 70s style. style. Well, it was the 70s. <laughs> he, he's, they drafted me. And you can see his, uh, he's got this great, I mean, it looks like he came off the disco. Yeah, court. it does. Yeah, it does. It's awesome. Great big beard. He he's, looks like he's wearing this little disco chain yes. necklace. I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's ridiculous. It's so funny. And then he gets all shaved up and oh, still doesn't get uniform. And so. he, he's like, a, Jim, did you miss me? I mean, the way he's talking yeah. to him. So <laughs> I just loved him. And then, uh, of course, Shatner. He was like a... He's very Shatner in this movie. Oh, yeah. very much. He came around wow. with T.J. Hooker in this whole thing. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, he was right at the time. You could see it. He's... He's almost in between the Shatner that we knew through the 80s and the Shatner that we knew through the T.J. Hooker days. You know, he's kind of like that. That's very Shatner-ish. You know, oh, yes. He, he looks a little bit like he did in the TV show, but not much. You know, his hair became very, I don't know, for years people talk about him wearing a, a toupee. And he <laughs> did. Uh, in the back part and all that. You know, which, by the way, a lot of them did. It's yeah. just it's how yeah. it was. I mean, Walter Colling, uh, Chekhov, he had to. I mean, You can kind of tell. Well, we, well, now he has to, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And by it the way, happens. the first couple of episodes, they did not because they necessarily had to at the time, but because they, they were trying to make him look like Davy Jones of the Monkeys. <laughs> and they, <laughs> right. They really did. They that's, did. That's why they hired him. Yeah, he was supposed to be the young and hip Russian guy. <laughs> and they said, we want him to look like Davy Jones. Yep. <laughs> and, and so that's why they hired him. 
It was. <laughs> I wonder if they made any Teen Idol posters of them or anything. Oh, I don't know, but that's wouldn't that wanted. be a weird thing, to, a vintage thing to find? And, like and I wanted Teen him Idol to be poster. Russian because what he was trying to do is, is show talking about uh, uh, Gene Rodberry was trying to go for a world peace yeah. type of thing, it's like the world, like we could all get together and be behind this one thing that we can explore space. The final frontier, indeed. These are the voyages of Starship Enterprise. It's mission. Continuing mission. The five years. That's right. Five year mission. <laughs> so, all right. So, the other thing we like to do is what have you been playing now? Well, I've been watching. I was going to say, I've been watching. Um, oh, you've you been watching your Cocoon movies. I've been watching now. Cocoon because I. Uh, There's it, your 80s throwback. It, it took me a while to, to get them. I've been trying to get them for years. Um, but every time I went to get them, I, I, I tried to buy them years and years ago at Walmart. And when I went back to, to get them, because I didn't have the money the first time I saw them, went back to get them, and they were gone. Mm. So I, I tried to get them online, and someone was trying to sell them for $100. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So for years, every time I tried to get it, it I would almost get it, so I'd buy it out from under me. And, and then the other person would be trying to sell it for a lot of money. <laughs> and I'm like, I just couldn't do it. So the other day, I was able to get them both for not that much. I don't know, it was like 12, I think, for both of them. I was able to get it. And finally... And uh, the main reason why it made me jump on board was because I was really excited. I thought I wasn't going to have to buy them. I was all excited because, you know, a lot of times on HBO uh, Max or whatever it's called, they uh, bring movies on there together and all of them. Yeah. And they did finally. And they, it was a uh, Cocoon, The Return. And I'm like, oh, well, what's the point? Where's the first the one? First one. So yeah. finally, I, I was like, oh, what the heck? I'll look. And, yeah. and luckily, they had them together again for real cheap. I got yeah. Them. I may them. have seen the return more than I've seen the first one because I remember that's where they, they uh, the kid wants to go with grandpa and everything. Well, and, he did them both, and yeah. but in re- reality, I like the first one better. That one was directed by uh, Ron Howard, Ron Howard, yeah. and he wasn't able to do the second one because he was directing Willow. Willow, yeah, this little indie, indie film called Willow with, yeah, with some uh, some George Lucas guy. Yeah, you, know, you, you probably never heard of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a they're both good, but both of them. I like the first one a smidge better. Um, it, it, it does matter who directs. I'm not saying anything against the second one or the, the director, but it, it's not quite as uh, serious, but it's still good. Yeah. I may have to borrow this from and watch yeah. it. We'll, we'll have to do an episode about the Cocoon movies. Yeah. It's, what I love is the message, basically, about uh, that just because you're old doesn't mean you're out. Right. And I like that. Yeah. That's, I love that message anyway. Yeah. Uh, Especially as we're getting older ourselves. I mean, I'm about to turn 45 this month. Well, I'll tell you the truth while I'm watching it. Um I was always very close to my grandparents. Yeah. My grandpa, I mentioned this before, my grandpa was one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. My grandma, too. And and really, uh, Jeremy is grandma and grandpa. Really, yeah. all of the people, the older ages that I grew up with in the church, I, I'm a pastor of the church, and I, I look out, and I still remember those people. Yeah. I think people need to be respected. It uh, doesn't even matter what their age is. Yeah. And when I look at these, uh, these people were of the generation of my grandma and grandpa. Uh, the, the the greatest generation they call them in the uh, World War Two, and when I think about how so many people of our newer generation they don't think about that as much as this. Not to say I know what they're thinking, but I'm talking about by our actions we are known. Yeah, and so it, it, I think we ought to respect the generations and really come to to know and show them show them how much we appreciate them. That's yeah. all. Yep. Yep. So yeah, we'll have to do an episode on Cocoon, but I need to watch him again because yeah. it's been oh, so long. Brian Denny is so yeah. great. Man. You know, he's a, yeah, there's so many good actors. Yeah, there there's, is. Yeah, yeah, and then Wilford Brimley. Wilford Brimley. And his, Brimley. And his, Which, uh, do you know diabetes. I didn't know how much younger he was than we knew? Oh yeah, he, he was like in his late forties when he was doing those films. <laughs> yeah, but he's like just a little well, bit older than me. And speaking of he, Paul Grandpa Jones, when I start watching with the '69, you can see his from his skin. He's not really that old, but I think it was part of his comedic character thing that he did and I think that's what Hee Haw Haw was it was a, com- a mixture of a bunch of country style comedians and performers of different sorts that they put them all together in their own show and it was just corny jokes and I don't know why I didn't realize until this past week that when they would tell their corniest jokes is when they would do it in the corn field oh no, yeah that's what for it their was. corny jokes it's like oh I get it the yeah, corn but we were, jokes but we were little kids like babies yeah, it, we were just that. you know it's just funny stuff and we like I searched the world over and thought mm-hmm. I found true love you she made, made another, another and you were, were gone. gone and we'd always remember that one and I remember uh, John Ritter went out there and did that one time oh wow the, the whole That'd time fun. that they were doing it he was going <laughs> The whole yeah. time. <laughs> and you know what? I was used to in the 80s, they'd spit on each other. Oh, yeah. In the 60s or whatever, they wouldn't. They no, didn't do that. It, they, it didn't come on until later. 
Yeah, that's right. Oh, my goodness. But uh, on to what we've been playing, because i got to keep things moving. Sure, sure. And, of course, obviously, we've still been playing WWE 2K. Oh, yeah, it's going to take a while for And, it. y'all, if you get on to the Neverland official gaming channel, we did an entire pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've edited it down to where there's not so much loading time. And wait, there's no commentary from us. It's just a regular commentary. Uh, well, but I've got so many cool, crazy fun characters. I've got another pay per view that's queued up, ready, ready for us to play as well. Uh, for it's, it's a couple of different shows, but uh, I've been having fun making characters. I've been making He Man characters. You've been making characters. But here's here's the thing. We now, if you want to find some of the stuff we made, and if you would even like to download me and kick my butt. <laughs> Because I know you want to. Done. <laughs> uh, if you do a search within the creator things, if you happen to have the new game, if you search for Spider Pan, you should be able to find me now. I figured out how to change my username. And if you want to see, uh, Philip makes all kinds of fun characters. Uh, and you're under Pastor P A C, right? Mm-hmm. Pastor Pack. Make yeah. sure you spell Pastor. You did spell Pastor correct this time, yes, I guess, I with an O, because he actually, when he made his character, put it with an E instead of an O. It's it pretty too. funny. <laughs> I need to change it on mine, too, but I keep forgetting. I'll just get you in there I'm going to put it online and, and change the things around on that. So. Yeah. But, yeah, we were making a lot of fun characters. In fact, I have an entire arena based around the Phantom Nexus with our logo. If you think that would be fun for you to download that arena, create a show around it, get me in there, and whoop my butt, you go even, for it. You have even fun. have the uh, title of that. The um, Yeah, it's the Phantom Nexus. The Phantom Nexus title. Yeah. So if that sounds like fun to you, feel free. I put mm-hmm. it up there. and I, you I know downloaded what? it. If you put video up somewhere on YouTube of using that and you or putting a video of you kicking my butt let me know I want to see <laughs> oh I want to see it <laughs> yeah. share, share YouTube links with me send it to our email podcast at neverlandpodcast.com and say hey I kicked your butt well hey thank you yeah, thanks for downloading me so you can kick my butt because I know every once in a while you probably do right you just get sick of me and <laughs> you just want to <laughs> kick my butt you know, I just say nothing. Either that, either that, or maybe you're just like maybe you love me and you want to tag team with me, and I'll, I would be glad to tag team with you. <laughs> we will make an awesome team. We will win the championship together. We'll go. You are the champion, my friend. So, uh, <laughs> but they're they're still working out some of the glitches and bugs. There's been updates like almost weekly here lately, and uh, there's still a few bugs with the saving and stuff. I think that you know has crashed out on the PS4. I guess in PS5, I don't think you're having as much trouble as I'm having. Yeah, on I some don't things. think quite as much. One thing I'll um, say is with a game like that. There's so much to it. People, some people said all those games don't work. Listen, there's so much detail. So many, uh, so many things they do on those games. That, I mean, how could there not be some bugs? Right. I mean, good there's going to be bugs. I even had one today that I, uh, I think it was me versus uh, your brother-in-law. Oh yes, yes, and I had a funny glitch where he like dick, 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 where he kind of side to side <laughs> he wiggled. And I'm the seizure man. I should yeah. be the one oh, seizing. Yeah, he totally seized up. It was <laughs> it was funny, and I, I clipped it real fast. It doesn't even bother when so, I do it because. Yeah. I even purposely give myself. Look, I'm not making fun of anyone who has a seizure, but I can make yeah, fun of myself. Yeah, you have them. I mean, yeah, yeah I'm making fun of myself. So I purposely give myself uh, what do you call them taunts. I give mm. myself taunts so they could look a little bit like I'm wiggling around oh, like you're a seizure. Down. Yeah, because yeah. you know it's the stuff I live with, unfortunately. Oh, and that's even something I'm looking forward to. Somebody, you remember the Marvel, the White Rabbit? Oh yeah, yeah. she's like a Spider-Man villainess. Yeah. Uh, somebody had created her, and I downloaded her, and for some reason now she's been in two matches. And, but it'll be like a four-way or a three-way match, th- I mean, triple threat or f- fatal four, I guess I should say. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> With you know, But my wife will be involved. My wife is currently a champion. One of the champions. Aerith, Aerith Gainsborough from Final Fantasy VII is my main champion of the Glow Show. But White Rabbit has now gotten two pins over on, on my wife, Heather. And this pay-per-view that I've got ready to, ready to roar and to play on is finally it's for the title it is my wife and the white rabbit i'm kind of looking forward to see how this is going to go so it sounds like an alice in wonderland thing it does <laughs> she, it does she's chasing the white rabbit but i'm, I'm looking forward to, i almost I, I, I think if i play as heather i will probably end up winning but then again i was playing as heather at the times that she's gotten pinned so it's a chance she could lose this title you know what would be a great ring if we could make i'm sure we could do it if we put the like Made cards on the what do you call them the, the buckles not the buckles the uh, paddings around the buckles turn buckles turn buckles have have cards on that and then you know have it all around look like a Wonderland thing oh we totally could do that you know that'd be a great Wonderland I bet somebody ring. has because I've got a, a grid pardon me 
<laughs> Pardon me there. Uh, but I've actually downloaded uh, and we played in it. The last review was where somebody made a really cool Return of the Jedi that theme. That was great. I like that. Arena. That's great. Uh, I'm, right now, this current pay-per-view is an Empire to the Caribbean arena. Oh, great. That looks go. fantastic. But people have been making a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of people oh. who are just, they're just wrestling junkies and they make a lot of wrestling rings. It's really cool. But all the fans that make themed ones, Marvel ones, great DC stuff. ones, I even have one that I'm using. It is the VWA from the old NES Pro Wrestling. But where'd the rum go? <laughs> uh, we drank it before we got into the ring to try to numb the pain of beating each other. Oh since my us. There we go. Those guys really do get hurt a lot. Of yeah, times. they do. They do. Man, uh, it's a it's a rough job. Did but you, you ever see it. the? Uh, this is a real match. Did you ever see? I think it was one the first or one of the very first um, TLC matches where I can't remember who what his name was, where the table came up, boom, smacked the dude right in the nose. I mean, oh. split the nose um, in pieces. Ow. It was. It was terrifying. They had to take him out of the match. Oh, it, yeah. it was a um, it was a tag team match. It was like four tag teams in there, and it it, it came up and split his nose. I mean, Ow. it it was terrifying. Ooh. Oh, it yeah. it was a great match though. Now that y'all are having a visual of being having your nose hit by the table. Oh, it was uh, awful. <laughs> it was terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of the stuff that they do that they really they do put, sometimes put themselves on the line. Oh, they do uh, trying to entertain you, so you have to appreciate them. Yeah. Uh, other things I've been playing. Oh, I finally sat down to play the infamous Resident Evil Six. Oh, I haven't seen now, that. Resident Evil Six is infamous because uh, after Resident Evil Four, because that was a big seller. That was Resident Evil Four. It's one of the best Resident Evil games they've made. Uh, they thought that the players wanted more of an action style good game. And so they did Resident Evil 5, and it was, oh, okay, well, this is a little different. This is very much action. Okay, I guess it's different. Uh, so I didn't play Resident Evil 6 because I played a demo and I didn't like it long ago. And then from what I heard, it's like, wow, they just went all out trying to make an action game. And it's just not it's just not Resident Evil. And they had to fix it all and revamp everything for Resident Evil 7 and Village uh, and made it scary again. Resident Evil 6 ain't scary at all. <laughs> it is a shooting gallery. I swear. You're just running. I, I started playing. I'm not really getting it. I mean, it's it's kind of a, a, amusing, but uh, it's not one of the ones that I'm uh, like getting all into or like, oh, I, I want to keep going. It's kind of like, well, all right, I got through that chapter. Well, let's go play wrestling some more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> It's a zombie shooting gallery. and uh, I mean, it's, they got some variety, but I mean, they've, they've come up with a, a new virus. Uh, I believe it's a C virus. And instead of like your typical zombies, they got some that could jump at you. Or they're smart enough that they'll, they'll, they're still zombies, but they'll carry a baseball bat or a shovel and, and try to hit you with it. And some, and one of one areas of the outbreak, it's some of like uh, their SWAT teams or soldiers that were try- coming to deal with it that have become zombies and they still have their guns. They don't have enough sense to point it at you, but they're sitting there just randomly shooting their guns around. I'm like, well, that okay, that's kind of interesting. So I mean, there's a lot of a lot of stuff put into the game to kind of make it fun, uh, and it, it, it's for it's worth I guess playing. But for if you're if you're a longtime fan of Resident Evil, you're probably not going to have as much fun. It's just not quite Resident Evil, you know. It's just weird. So, but yeah, but I'm playing it, and I don't know how long I'll take to go through it because I'm kind of playing it. Then I'll go play something else, and I'll play another bit of it, and I'll play something else. I know that. Uh- <laughs> Not long ago, it's like about a week and a half ago. I was watching Tremors, the original. That's oh, my. That's the one I love. Fooled and, you. Oh yeah, I that's love an that movie. Joke. <laughs> While I was sitting there watching it, I was sitting there thinking, you know, it would be great if they could make a movie. I mean, a, make <laughs> a, a game, game based off Tremors. That would be. It'd be like a Resident Evil thing, except you're being chased by the Tremors. But by the worms. By the. I mean, like suddenly. Uh, Resident Evil 3 and Nemesis, the original, actually did a big giant worm that was going oh. over in the sewers that you have to fight with at one that, point. Now, that would be fun. Oh, it was kind of terrifying. That's what it, I mean. Its mouth would open up, like, blah, almost like a sandworm from Dune, man. Well, there's a similarity. Yeah. And oh, yeah. I, in fact, when I first saw Tremors, I thought of the, that sandworm. Sandworm, yeah. Same um, like Beetle just ripped off the sandworm, too. Oh, well, yeah. Sandworms. You hate them, right? Yeah, I, I really hate I him I myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do a good Beetlejuice voice. I'm sorry. <laughs> it was not good, and I will freely admit to that. Well, at least you sound a little bit like the cartoon one. <laughs> I thought it was almost a little bit like uh, Barney from The Simpsons. Or hey, uh, Homer! Bobcat Goldflake. <laughs> hey! Hey! No, that's Barney. <laughs> hey! Well, I swear they ripped Barney off. They ripped off Bobcat Goldway uh, for Gold, that Barney Goldflake, character. Yeah. yeah. I mean, goodness, he, you, you, it's hard to, to match him. But anyways, I guess we'll get into some uh, news.
spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. Okay, so uh, I found an article from Insider.com where they have a list of some of the movies that they were excited about, of uh, different scenes they were showing in that. There's a photo from this upcoming Elvis movie that... Uh, I, I think that's supposed to be like the comeback show. It like, is. They filmed it in Hawaii, didn't they? Um, I, I don't remember if it was Hawaii. Uh, um, I, I know, know it was a big deal. It was a, um, it was it a, was a big deal. It was a Christmas um, thing. Originally, his uh, manager at the time wanted him to make it a Christmas. It was kind of a Christmas thing. It was the uh, uh, 68 special. Yeah. And, and he, he made a... Uh, Basically, it's supposed to be Christmas based, and there was only one uh, song that he sang that was somewhat Christmas like. But it was because that's what the original was going to be kind of Christmas based. But he wanted to make it to where it could be seen all year long for the most yeah, part. But, yeah. it, but you know, think uh, this back was then. his return from the military, I believe, yeah. yeah, for the most part. And when he came back, um, you know. The Beatles were around. These are the day of the, the, the you know more of the hippie generation, and, yeah. and he kind of missed out on a, few, a couple of years there. Where uh, the the only thing that his manager did do that worked out for the good was his manager uh, had him record quite a few recordings, and every once in a while would release and keep him uh, still releasing yeah. songs here and there. That did help. Yeah, and keep him in the public eye. Yeah, that really, way. that really did help. Yeah. I have a, a movie about that yeah. that was made for television. It's pretty good. Um, it has um, Oate who, who plays. But anyways, I want to get the focus back on this okay, one. Okay, I was going to say, <laughs> it, it, say you're chasing a, a rabbit. Dennis, I mean Randy Quaid plays the the manager. Oh, he does a great job. I know they've done like a TV movie about that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's pretty good, but, but this uh, one looks really good. But this is a photo of this new upcoming Elvis movie, uh, and there's this photo. I mean, it just looks like they, they look lifted from the TV it. special. This looks really great. Really look forward uh, to that. Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness coming out this week. Guess what? Can't we will wait. be uh, provided everything goes correctly. We will be back next week. You will hear from us because it'll be free comic book day, and we'll go see Doctor strange top gun maverick is scheduled for may 27th wait. looking awesome uh, but there's a lot of different games in jurassic world dominion june 10th i know Can't folks are really looking for that you ain't a kidding like your june 17th i mean a lot of this and then there's the elvis june 24th but a lot of the things that i was seeing for CinemaCon, they got to see clips and stuff of all these different movies and uh, every once in a while on social media you might have heard oh we've announced something but the only things that i that I got announced with stuff I was like well yeah like another Ghostbusters movie is coming well yeah obviously they set it up and then of course the Batman's getting a sequel well yeah obviously they're going to build a new DC extended universe there will be another Batman movie coming come on so it's like all this news I was getting I wasn't getting that excited about I was like well, yes, I know they're going to do it so everybody was posting oh they, they announced they're going to make another Batman Really? Did you not realize they were going to do it already? I mean, it's like, yeah, water is wet. Yeah. You know, this just in, grass stains your pants, you know. I mean, <laughs> it's stuff that we know. It's like, yeah, we know. Thank you for announcing it at CinemaCon. But, yeah, I the excitement on the social media was just like, I, I get it. Yeah, you're, you know, I'm looking forward to you know, seeing the next movie, but I'm not all that stunned, shocked, or whatever, like, or surprised that they announced it. That, oh, by the way, we're going to make a sequel to that. Because, like, obviously we knew you were. Now I've just got to wait for you when you do it. Well, you ended it on a, I don't know if you want to say cliffhanger, but you ended it on almost on a Ghostbusters. Yeah. yeah. Well, Ghost, I mean, well, not heck, Ghostbusters, they I, even, I meant Batman. Oh, it Batman was, even, yeah. yeah. The, it was like, but Ghostbusters as well, it, you, you, I don't know if you want to say that it was obvious, but it was in a sense like a, oh, wink, wink, wink. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, we'll have more with Batman. Ha ha ha! Be how to Joker. Uh, well, the one thing that was announcement that uh, I guess we weren't expecting. Now, uh, granted, uh, we we we, t- we kind of expect the MCU is just going to keep going, Marvel Cinematic Universe. But uh, Kevin Feige did announce that they've got plans for at least ten more years of MCU, which of course provided the momentum keeps going. Now, I there is some concerns that they might end up killing their momentum. By some changes they're doing. Uh, and I even watched a, a video. Uh, uh, I don't watch this guy that often because it's one of those videos where they want kind of complains about everything. But it did make some solid points of uh, how they're they're changing over. They want to have more women heroes, and but they're not building them in a proper way to make them, make them good heroes. They're, 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 they're establish their women characters in a wrong way by they teach themselves how to be better than the men. And they, they um, oh, what is they, they... Well, basically, he, he had a whole sequence. Like, do you realize that nearly every Marvel male hero has been 
hit in the groin by a woman that they're trying to make stronger. And like and nearly, and they go went through. But you listen up. Here's nearly every woman who's brought in there who is self taught. I just taught myself, and now I'm just better than all the men. That's not how you make a good hero character. So, but that seems like that's the direction they're going. They're going to give us all these female characters, but they're not going to make them good characters. Kind of like Captain Marvel. They kind of messed that up there. But and they're not looking over what Warner Brothers did with that Wonder Woman movie, which was fantastic. They got it right. And made, then they then they made the Wonder Woman 1984, and you're like, what what happened? There's things about it I liked, yeah, but, it, but it, they, they it, blew it. Well, <laughs> in a lot of ways. A part of the reason was, for me at least, part of it was and I'm not trying to pick on the actor, but they spent half their time trying to make fun of a, of a public individual um, with one of the characters. Mm, uh, yeah, and they did. That was their point. Yeah, they even yeah. said that. They, so. they get so far in an agenda, they're not telling us a good story anymore and making good characters. Mm. And Marvel has needs to go through. It's like, you know what? What makes a good hero character? And they're, they're giving us some newer ones, but, you know, they... There's there's some established Did characters. When we get some X Men, newer ones or newer ones. I didn't. Uh, <laughs> no, some of the newer ones. I mean, yeah. there's there's some great potential characters. They can if they get into the get some X Men going. Because I mean, who is the the woman among all women of Marvel? Who is the oh. top? The Invisible Woman the of invisible the Fantastic woman, Four. Absolutely. Storm. Storm. I mean, some of them. Jean Grey. Jean Grey. Yeah. You've got some gold, good old fashioned, been around a long time women Rogue. that a lot of us would be excited to see. But if, if they mess it up, they never did do Rogue right on the last round. They did. uh, they, I, they didn't they didn't do bad, but they didn't want they didn't go far enough to where she got all the powers that she would get. They didn't do the Marvel Girl thing. And yeah, they, but they could now. They no, have Captain yeah. Marvel out there. They, they could, could have Rogue absorb all of her powers. That would be, and then we get a Rogue that like we had in the nineties. That's the way it ought to be, man. Because yeah. that Rogue that's was, what that's what we're used to. You know, I love Rogue. A strong Rogue that could fly. I and love Rogue, man. Rogue smash is, some people. Rogue is awesome. Rogue is still my favorite of all those gals, man. She was just Rogue so cool. Was awesome. Yeah, and but and, they had more to them than their get powers. The Gambit story and her because her and Gambit were just oh, yeah, they were just great together. Because Gambit was more to me. I mean, he was just yeah. cool. He's such a flirt, and then she's like, oh, she was attractive, but I can't touch you. You know what happens if I touch somebody? I'll kill him. Yeah, you know, and and the last guy, first boy I kiss, I put in a coma. And I want to see a real southern accent too. I don't want to see. I don't even know what they were trying to do, but it, I want to well, see. She kind of had one. I just want to see the real uh, story between yeah. them all. And I've been talking about all of them. Yeah. I want to see it happen. But I want to see them done, you know, done a service. Because it's not, not I just, know you shouldn't be just years. about, oh, well, we, we're just so happy to have representation. Like, yeah, well, you deserve a better hero to represent you. Yeah. And the thing is, it's you like, need, I, you need I a like, good character. I like the, those films, all right, I guess. It's just that, um, the, to me, this is just me speaking, but I think a hero. Is someone who has to go through the hard times. Yeah. And I'm not trying to quote uh, Dusty, I almost wore a shirt today. Hard times. I, I'm not trying to say that you have to go through, but the hard times, a lot of times, what makes you a hero. Yeah. Um, oh, and heck, even the Batman, he went through such a character growth. It takes him a long time, but then when you see him emerge and become, instead of just, I am vengeance, to, I got to save these people and sacrifice myself nearly, he nearly dies trying to save people. When, it's like he became. Batman. I recently watched point. Rocky, which is to, yeah. to oh, me. I watched Rocky. I forgot I was going to bring that up for some. I watched. I watched that Rocky Four. Director's Rocky cut, and um, Karate Kid, directed yes. by the same man, by the yes. way. Yes. But the the thing is, is Karate Kid. When you watch it, he was a little bit whiny in the yeah. beginning of it, As, and Rocky, uh, same way. Well, not that he was a whiny guy, but that they both had to go through a lot of hard times in order to get there to the top yeah. of the mountain to become who they were going to be. It, exactly. Even Superman had a learning curve. That's right. That's right. And in order to get to where you got to be, you, you a lot of times will have to climb and go through a lot of work. And go. Yeah. Through, and and that, I, I love that. I don't want to see someone just, by the way, here you oh, go. I get to be awesome just because I'm a woman. Yeah. Because that's kind of what they're doing. And I hadn't realized that Moon Knight, I'm loving Moon Knight. Oh, me too. But they've been, been a little guilty. I hadn't, I hadn't thought of it until they, he pointed out. It's like you realize the main the main character the main hero we're not seeing moon knight except for uh, up to the, the fourth episode he says like you realize if you time it out he's had about four minutes of screen time in the yeah. costume yeah and we've had more time with Stephen lang and an alternate personality who's kind of a, a wuss yeah. and that but that gives opportunity for the female character layla that we didn't know anything about to her be the strong one and it's like well we're making it a layla series a little too much there but uh i, I think you're getting back on track i think uh, uh, moon knight i still feel is pretty well balanced yeah and i'm expecting in the final episode we're going to see a lot more of him in the moon knight costume and actually being moon knight 
because so, you're trying to get that the yeah. inner character to yeah. get balanced. And this, out. this this fifth episode was wild and weird and and cool. Oh, was that I dug there, it? But I really liked it. Yeah, I've been enjoying it. But they're 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 doing a nice mental study. But you know, so, but it was pointed out. It's like we seem to see more of Stephen Lang, who is not capable of stuff. So the uh, so Layla can shine more. It's like you know we're passing it more to her than we are. We want to see Moon Knight. So I will say this though, I'm talking about on a, on a personal perspective. Uh, watching Stephen Lang go through what he went through and all that stuff helped me. Uh, it, I, yeah. I mean, personally. Well, really, when you Mark Spector, what he's gone through with the, with the abuse of mother. No, well, I don't want to say too much. I'm spoiling no, things. No, but I'm, I'm, I mean, Stephen, because so watching Steven him um, react the way he does helped me as a person because I'm a very timid person sometimes. I don't mean to be, but watching him kind of helped me because I realized that you need to. It's good to be kind and yeah. nice, but don't be quite so timid. And that's helped me. Uh, I've recently, be kind, but don't be a doormat. Yeah. And so recently, yeah. uh, going through all that and watching him, I'm not saying he taught me because it just happened at the exact same time when I'm watching this show. A few other things was happening in my life. And while uh, someone tried to say something to me, and I'm like, mm, no, 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 not having that happen. Mm. And I was right as I happened, I watched the show, and I was like, oh, you see, there's times I've acted a little too much like that Stephen character, and I'm yeah. not letting that happen anymore. So it, it just so happens that as I'm watching the show, I'm realizing that uh, the Stephen character in some ways taught me what not to be. <laughs> <laughs> but somebody give Oscar Isaac an Emmy. Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. He's a heck of an actor. My goodness. Oh, it's like all the different characters he has to play in one thing. Like, I was like, and, dude, and I gotta that's say, amazing. I love the, the computer effects on that hippo. How, how cute and adorable. <laughs> yes. I love that character. Yes, I don't know who great. it was who did the voice. How uh, it adorable. Was great. Uh, one thing that I still, the best visual that I think I've seen is, I think it was, I think it was episode three or four. When he uh, when Moon Knight in the full costume and he jumps off of like that glass pyramid and his cape actually does the moon shape like would they oh, always draw him in the comics? Yeah, I loved it. When he went into that shape with the cape, I was like, yes, that's perfect. Oh, it was so great. I always remember that visual. And I felt like it, it was, was so um, good. really bringing, honestly, bringing the comic book to life. Like yeah, I always in a to lot see of it. ways, they did. They did a great job. And and this is just a personal thing, but I, I felt like it was. Like drawings and stuff I drew as a kid. Not not of that character, but of other characters and stuff that I would come up with and you would come up with, Jeremy. Yeah. And it was like watching the comic books and pictures I've drawn a million times, like watching it in front of me on the television. And I was like, wow, this is like something that I wanted to see my whole life, at least least the last 30 years. I was like, and here it is. I'm, and I'm getting to see it, and yeah. oh, okay, I know it sounds corny, but that's, but that's what we stuff. want. Yeah, it's I want that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So I'm yeah. loving the show, and I, I, and I, I look got, forward to the moment I wake up on Wednesday mornings. Boom! I got to go yeah, to it. <laughs> I, I got to work though, so I got to wait. Yeah, uh, you know, I've been watching sometimes like Friday when I work from home. I'll, I'll try to eat breakfast and watch oh, it before I start. I, I got to be so, honest. There's been times at midnight, at Tuesdays, you're still like, awake. I, I, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to sleep so I can work. <laughs> I can't do it. I have to work for a living. Yeah, there are some things I have concerns about Marvel Comics and some things that I've. That they're doing that uh, we're going to get to with Free Comic Book Day. I'll talk about that later. Which there's some other weird stuff. But anyways, uh, something else I saw. This was this is kind of sad. The Circle K that we use in Bill and yes. Ted is closing down. And Alex Winter said a very tweeting tweet that we it. all just dust in the wind. Mm-hmm. So uh, there are there are things afoot in the Circle K no longer. That's right. And I guess it was in uh, oh where was it? And somewhere in Arizona. Yeah. It's, it is it would have been sad. nice to visit it before it comes down. To me, that is. I bet the, a lot of people are going to visit before it gets torn that down. That is too. the probably the most famous Circle K. <laughs> oh, that is the most famous Circle K. Clearly. Yeah, I, I love that place just yeah. because. So, how many memories? But you know, at least we got the memories still. Yeah, we got the memories. That's right. <laughs> ah, here something else is a fun memory, and I've got uh, I've got an article on it to pull up as well from Ghostb- Ghostbusters News has a lot of stuff. There's a fellow in Canada. He's got a website and a uh, YouTube channel. But Hook and Ladder Number Eight, they're in New York City. Uh, they were given a Ghostbusters sign uh, a while back, and they have officially lit it up. Oh, now that is awesome. Now this is, of course, the that, fa- the firehouse used the in the first movie. Yeah. And the second movie, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, but they were given one in celebration for the theatrical release of Ghostbusters Afterlife. And it's been put out on display. And it actually, they got a photo of it here of it at night. Got it lit up. That's tremendous. That's uh, great. That's fantastic. I mean, and there's a GoFundMe page, I guess, that's set up to where you can help to donate. Um, they're, oh, what is it? They're donating. they got a special thing going on. Hang on. Uh, no, 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 no. 
uh, they ex- they exceeded their original goal when they were trying to raise money for uh, the, the the sign. I think there's something special they're trying to raise money for too. They want to do an annual fundraiser for the firehouse. We have worked with the firehouse to determine something that they need, and this year we are raising funds for a vending machine to be placed inside the firehouse for the crew to enjoy. So they're raising money, I guess, because I, I figure it's still a working firehouse. Oh, it is, from what I understand. So, so they're taking care of the fire department over there Good. because, like, you're working in a very special precinct. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. And, and, and in New York, you know, right? Yeah. In, in New York City, those people are busy all the time having to protect all those people all the time. Yes, That's indeed. a big, big city. Okay, well, we're, we're in a new month, which means I get to uh, talk about some of the new games. Uh, let me look and see if there's anything. I haven't looked at this list to see if there's if, Rift Tracks the Game. What is it? Oh, Rift Tracks the Game. That's the people who were behind uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 who do Rift Tracks. Oh. They have a game on PC, PS4, Switch, Xbox One. It's a party game. We were just talking about Mystery Holy Science cow. Theater 2000. Holy cow. Let's see if there's anything else that uh, I'm excited about. Listed. You know, I'm excited about the Call of Duty I was telling you Evil about. Evil Dead, the game. There you go. Oh, yes. I want to try that. Coming May 13th. No. I think it's going to be based more off from uh, carrying over from the uh, the television series. Probably. I didn't like that as much as I did. Streets of Rage 4 is being brought to Android and iPhone. Hmm. Mm, I think I'd rather play it on a console. A My Little Pony Maritime Bay Adventure. For those of you... Oh, Pac-Man Museum Plus. Yes, I was wanting to try May that. May 27th. Heck yeah. You know I'm a Pac-Man nut. Oh, lots of Pac-Man. Oh, wow. It's right in time for your birthday. <laughs> yes, indeed. So if somebody wants to buy me a Pac-Man set for my PlayStation, I'm happy. <laughs> but yeah, that's a, there's a lot of other different things, but not, not anything that I've really heard much about. We need to look in that Godzilla thing I told you about. Godzilla. Uh, I, it's, uh, believe me, it's coming. Ah, Disney Mirrorverse. Now, there's already toys of this out. But there's also a mobile game coming. There we go. Beyond the worlds familiar to you, there exists another, born of powerful stellar magic. A universe reflected from the familiar, yet different. Perilous. The Mirrorverse. At its center lies the Stellar Mirror, with malevolent forces seeking to shatter its power. Guardians stand together, united against this unrelenting threat. As the darkness closes in, all must fight to protect the Mirrorverse and save all the worlds beyond. So you can pre-register now at DisneyMirrorverse.com, but this is going to be a mobile game. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned, and I was even talking to a guy at Gamestop uh, about this, but there's already the uh, McFarland Toys has already released figures. I've seen them. Disney know what characters kind of doing different type of things, and he says he he was pretty excited. So that there's a Mickey who's he's got he's, he's like a sorcerer Mickey, but he's like a cool looking sorcerer Mickey because I guess he wasn't cool looking before. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I always thought it was cool looking. Yeah, but I guess it's like an enhanced. But all these new different toys are all coming around. Okay, I'm gonna skip that next story. That I was uh, I was talking to this uh, talking to Philip about that one earlier, and I was like I didn't know if that seemed to what we wanted to get into because it's not fun fun story. So I'm going to go back to more fun stories. The Force Unleashed. Which did you ever get to play that? I played a little bit with y'all. I know Seth and I, I talked it, about uh, it for years. Yeah, I had it on my Xbox 360. It has been released on Switch by Aspire. They're the same ones who brought Knights of the Republic over to the, over to the Switch. Now, what I have seen though on this. This is the Nintendo Wii version of the game. Oh, okay. So the graphics are not as good, and it's got some motion controls, but you can shut those off. So it's Wii Wars? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Star Wars Wii Wars. Uh, <laughs> but if you've never played The Force Unleashed, I'm going to encourage you. Uh, it's $20 right now. I'm not, I've already got it on a different system, so I'm not really that concerned about buying it for the Switch right now. Uh, but if you've never played The Force Unleashed, or if you just need another copy... Go ahead and pick it up. But it is, keep in mind that if you've played it on like an Xbox 360 or on a PS3, it has been downgraded because the weed was not as powerful as the other systems. And they just brought over that version. 
Winston, I, I, instead of Winston, I have Winstead. Oh my goodness. Winston is being added to the Sega. Did you ever play the Sega Genesis Ghostbusters game? Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. Well, they for some reason, Winston was not in the game. Why? So, don't know why. I just it just didn't, didn't make any it. sense. They're probably because they didn't have the, the uh, maybe they didn't have enough memory space to do any more than three playable characters. And instead of just modding and doing a cover up of one of the characters to make it look like Winston, they just flat out just added Winston in on a mod. This is not official. This is a fan made thing. So uh, uh, I'm not going to tell you how to get it because it's not te- technically legal. Oh, okay. Okay, but it's just kind of cool that somebody took the time to do that. So I've got another. Uh, PCGamesIn.com. Well, I gotta click the right thing here. Captain's Log: The Last Voyage of Trigon, a space story. Now, why did I grab this? There was something specific about this that I thought I'd grabbed. Something called Captain's Log, Trigon. I, you know, I I feel like I clicked this and it was something else. When I was grabbing this thing, it's something on PC Games. I guess something. I heard something about this game, but now I don't remember what I heard about it. Yeah, well, yeah. I, like, uh, was this supposed to be a Star Trek style game? I guess not. I don't know. I don't remember what it was, so I'm just going to move on. But I had the link here. Uh, okay, here. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up. I was going to bring this up maybe later. Uh, and free comic book day. Pardon me. I had to clear my throat a little bit. But, uh, okay, so there's a couple of things going on that uh, this is what keeps me from getting too far back into comics. So, Moira McTaggart, friend of Charles Xavier... At some point, they've turned her into, like, a killer cyborg. (laughs) She's skinless. So what she does is she goes around... Okay, she's a machine underneath now. She skins people alive and wears their skin. Oh, my goodness. Like a... Like a... Not Hannibal Lecter. What was the... um uh, the guy from uh, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, yes. that's disgusting. Yes. Uh, kind of doing that. Well, uh, I guess, and it might have been an issue of X-Men. I don't know where someone was showing, you know, the online show the, the drawings of it, but his latest effect appears to be Mary Jane. And from the sounds of things, on Free Comic Book Day, we're going to see, I guess, where this goes, but apparently Mary Jane is about to get skinned. Oh, and they're gonna, they're, she's sake. going to, because you're skinned alive, she's going to somehow be alive with without her skin, and maybe they're going to make a weird point. I don't know what else go, what they're doing exactly with that. But if that's not weird enough, and I, it's like I had that stupid I, stuff they did with the Joker. Yeah, it's you know they're doing weird stuff for shock value to try to make it spend money. The other weird thing is, and I was kind of excited about this, seeing that John Romita Jr. was coming back to Amazing Spider-Man. Because I enjoyed his run. I mean, he's got a very... I, it, I didn't always enjoy his style back when he was doing Uncanny X-Men back in the 90s. But I've grown to like his unique style. Uh, but his comeback was Amazing Spider-Man at number one. They We needed another volume, I guess. Uh, and in this particular issue, Peter uh, is kind of watching after Mary Jane. They're not together anymore. But Mary Jane is married to some guy named Paul and has two kids. Yeah, don't mess with this stuff, please. That's all I got to say. So this is why I, I'm going to go through. I want to collect the, the rest of the Nick Spencer run because Nick Spencer was writing some awesome Spider-Man. I want to collect the rest of that and I want because I want to read it all. But then I'm I'm tired of them messing with my Spider-Man and my Mary Jane. You guys could probably couldn't hear my eyes rolled. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I had enough the one new day thing, which they had to kind of make up for those sins. And like, why do you all never learn to not mess with things? Oh, but uh, oh, something else. This was a lot of fun. So it's a it's a YouTube channel called Corridor, and uh, they took some weird time of editing and some special effects and put the Adam West Batman into some scenes from the Batman. I watched that and earlier, and it's so funny. <laughs> it's great. It is fantastic. I was watching the guys. I don't think I can it. play the audio because I, I, I yeah. There's a behind the scenes video. You can yeah, watch I was them watching do it. that. Yeah, and then they have it just the, 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 the finished product. You can watch the trailer. That they, they did they made. a great job. They we, did we, they, the way they put uh, Burger Meredith. Yeah, and, and all the Meredith in there. Oh, <laughs> he was so great. Uh, uh, I was watching the couple and even days get ago. The, the the Riddler uh, from the, there. Uh, yeah, Frank Gorshin. Yeah. I'd forgotten about something in the a couple days back. I think I sent it to you, but um, I remember it now. Um, watching you sent it, me a thing, and I'd already seen it. Actually, yeah, actually, within the last couple of weeks, I was watching. It was that. just kind of an, an interesting thing, and I'd forgotten all about it. But I remember now seeing it way back when. Yeah, Adam was giving his opinion about Michael Keaton in 1989, and, like and he hadn't gotten to see it yet. Yeah, and he said, "Oh, I'm going to wait till I see it." And and they all went out and saw the film, and later on, because I remember seeing it after he saw it, you know, and uh, of course, you know, he said, "Ours, of course, is the best Batman," because that's kind of his, you know, wry yeah. humor, and yeah, uh, but. Uh, 1989 and and uh, where's ours is the best 
version of Batman. You know, of course, you're going to say that. But in reality, a lot, I forgot just how many people were against Batman when it came out in 89. Yes. A lot of people were like, Michael Keaton, but I want a big Batman. He's too skinny. Yeah. The, See, I think he was skinny. Look at Robert Pattinson. <laughs> of course, they hadn't seen it yet. Right. And, and uh, no one had seen it yet. And they, at the time, I remember now, a lot of people really thought that that um, rubber or armor or whatever was supposed to be real muscle. They, th- mm. they, I remember this being a big deal. They thought that he was, they was trying to put that on as real muscle, and uh, I remember Stallone even making a big deal about it. That this is the problem is that people are going to think you know he's I have real muscle, and this guy ain't got no muscle. They actually him. tried him out, tried him out as Batman, but they, you know, that's not who mm. they're looking for. They weren't looking for, or they tried him out as Superman or whatever it was, but he wasn't the actor kind of actor they're looking for. Yeah. He would have been weird. He, he just would. He's not. I mean, I love. And, and even though, like, I remember some girl in that video was thinking that she wanted Arnold Schwarzenegger. She yeah. wanted a big guy. It's like, she, but what are you going to do about his heavy I'm ba- accent? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'll come back and kill him as Mr. Freeze. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord help and, us. Uh, yeah, that would have been bad. That would have been so bad. Well, you know, the thing is, is the muscle isn't everything. Yeah. It's, uh, we, we love you. But yeah, mm-hmm. but definitely go go find Corridor's YouTube channel and find that. You will laugh. It is so good. They did a great job. So, oh, something else that I found out. What's that, Brick Dale? Now, I wish I had more detail. We've been talking about it. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Yes. They are aiming at a summer release. They officially said it, it will be out this summer. Also, there was a kind of an interesting thing. Lego is making something called Brick Tales. And, uh, 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 oops. All right, come out of there. Bricktails. Oh, they're getting in my way here. But Lego Bricktails. And it's uh, it's another game that's based around just their uh, initial Lego type of sets. And so you, but you've got uh, adventures you can have. Uh, I mean, in a way, from the looking at some of the pictures, there's an announcement trailer. It looks like it might be a follow up to the Lego Dimensions, but you can actually build your items in this. And instead of like, you know, in the normal Lego games, you just kind of hold a button and it builds it for you. This, you can assemble your things. It shows you the pieces and you build your vehicles and all your different items yourself. So this is more aimed at people who are just huge fans of Lego, oh, the, 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 of building, building things. Brick tails. Brick. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't help it. <laughs> now, I don't know when that's coming out, but that's been announced. And I know it is coming at least to Nintendo because that's where I oh, found that, the article. That's fun. Uh, also, the Sonic Origins release date has been set for June 23rd. Now, is this the game? Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC. Sonic Origins has a, has a little trailer out there you can find on YouTube. But this is a new collection. Four remaster games, including Sonic the Hedgehog, Sonic CD, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Sonic Origins includes added features, modes, and more. Now, when we were young... Who on earth would have ever thought that the Sonic games would be going to Nintendo? Well, yeah, well, Sega, Sega, I know. They, they failed with their Dreamcast, and so they end up being bought by Nintendo. But isn't that funny? So. And we never. But would have they're thought better that. at making games than they are consoles. Yeah, they, they, are. they realized it. So they are. And you know, the thing is, is uh, it, it is kind of unique to see. It, it would be. It's like whenever we had Mickey Mouse and, and Bugs Bunny teaming up on Roger Rabbit. <laughs> we, we never, yeah. we never would have thought that. It, when we were really young, we never would have yeah. thought that. I mean, we were, I was 11 when the Roger Rabbit movie came out, yeah. and you were just turned 11. Yeah. So it was like, who would have thought, though, that these, what do you want to call it, enemies, if you will, that those who are, compete. Wait, who who would have known we'd gotten Daffy and Donald dueling pianos? Oh, that was the best. <laughs> that was, I love that scene. They're both absolutely nutty. Hey, you guys got a spare. Uh, I don't know, but I, I, I don't have one, but I think Bugs does. <laughs> I got one, but I don't think you want it. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I love it. Love it, love it, love it. That's awesome stuff. I love it. Come on in. We're nightmares on the best part of my day.
missed that. But in order to keep the show moving, it's time to go to the trailer park. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that show. Come here. Get him, Mama. Get that gator. The Neverland Trailer Park. You know, I thought somewhere in there I would have the trailer for the Call of Duty is doing Operation Monarch, and it's going to have like that Godzilla versus that's, King Kong thing. Yeah, that's the one I can't wait Maybe to see. Maybe that's in my trailer park, because I remember looking at it. Boy, that looks good. But uh, I actually have something I went to cover a while back. Call, this is called The Sea Beast. It's coming to Netflix. For a sailor, a map tells of seas to be explored. Of great reward. Hmm. And great peril. But it's where the map ends that the true adventure begins. It's below us. A hunting ship ain't no place for a kid. Ooh. You're amazing. <sighs> oh, I like this kid. <laughs> Them pictures of me books come to life. It's where it's out there in the vast unknown. That we find who we truly are. <laughs> Don't worry. Well, one of them good. things within a mile of us. I'll sense it. Maybe a little off my game here. Yeah? <laughs> Some great animation on that. July 8th, coming to Netflix. This is from Academy Award winning filmmaker Chris Williams, who brought you Moana and Big Hero 6. The Sea Beast takes us where the map ends and the true adventure begins, starring Carl Urban, Zaris Angel H- Hater, Jared Harris, Marianne Jean-Baptiste, Dan Stevens, and Kathy Burke. In an era when terrifying beasts roamed the seas, monster hunters were celebrated heroes, and none were more beloved than the great Jacob Holland. But when young Maisie Brumble stows away on his fabled ship, he's saddled with an unexpected ally. Together they embark on an epic journey into uncharted waters and make history. This looks... I, I just came across that, and it looks like it might be some fun. That actually looks like it could have been a theatrical thing. More, yeah. More than some of them that they brought out recently. We're getting a lot of stuff that's being put straight to streaming. Cause, you know, yeah, people I'll, are slowly getting back to theaters, but yeah, there's a lot of slow, movies that are still sure, taking. Slow but sure. Slow but sure. Here's something that uh, you can watch it on YouTube, and I'm only bringing this as almost a... Somebody wanted it. Here we go. I got to show this to you. You're gonna You're going to lose your stuff here. Oh, boy. Okay, the visuals are not working for some reason. Friend, people are dying. It's a shame. Dude, you just want to run into danger head first and throw caution to the wind? Why is this so important to you? What could possibly be worth risking all of our lives? I know we don't know each other, but in order to face what's coming, we need each other. With everything going on right now, who can you really trust? Okay, because it seems to be mostly we're getting some using, and I don't want to have a copyright strike put on us. This is a thing called Mystery Incorporated, but it's being done independently through oh. Indiegogo. Uh, and I want to tell you, this has already been released. Uh, if, you go, if you really want to see this, Mystery Incorporated, it's on YouTube. They have, now have 627,000 views on this thing, which I guess it shouldn't surprise me because, all right, I would have thought it weird with Riverdale. Uh, that's a very oh, serious, yes. darker-toned Archie. This is Mystery Incorporated. This is the Scooby gang taken as realistic and dark, and Scooby doesn't talk because he's just a freaking dog. Oh. They took everything you love about Scooby-Doo and threw it away to remake it as a realistic and serious. And basically, Shaggy doesn't even sound like Shaggy. Although I have seen some when the visuals weren't working on this thing when I was trying to show this to Philip here. But he is still a cowardly. I mean, but they took the humor and the fun out of Scooby-Doo 
and made this. But apparently a lot of people were wanting to see it. And I figured I had to at least sing it out there. Yeah, jinkies. Um, <laughs> moving on from that I hope nightmare. Of Scooby wouldn't. snacks. <laughs> I don't know, but Shaggy's probably still going to be a pothead. Uh, oh, hey, I did find this. This is, you know, this weekend. So here we go. What is grief? If not love, persevering. Part of the madness of the multiverse is we get to see different realities. And we see different versions primarily of Doctor Strange, but we do see other versions of Wanda Maximoff. I think WandaVision was this journey of her for the first time, taking her own life into her own hands. And it was fun transitioning from her experience to this movie. We could use an Avenger. There are other Avengers. We'll get you back on the lunchbox. What do you know about the multiverse? We wanted to satisfy the WandaVision fans and take them to the next level with the character they love. It was fun just looking at it from a different perspective. The multiverse has had his theories. He believed it was dangerous. We need your help. It's magical. She owns that character so well. It's a very powerful performance with a very powerful character. In the multiverse, there are alternate versions of everyone. It gives the characters a unique opportunity to meet themselves, to recognize qualities that they may have been blind to. The fate of the multiverse depends on us. Okay, so this was a feature focusing on Wanda. Now, the reason why I also want to bring this up is there's people suspecting this is we're going to get a bait and switch, and this is going to feel a little like a Wanda movie more than a Doctor Strange movie. Because even looking at the poster, who is front and center? Wanda. The new Thor poster. Who's on there? Not Thor. Jane Foster Thor. So, but what what I find very interesting about this little teaser that they put online is she looks straight at the camera, intentionally. I wonder what that's what's up with that. And the other thing's kind of got me all excited because we've been hearing Charles Xavier's voice mm. in there. But have you seen this new trailer thing or the commercial where you see the yellow floating chair kind of floating in and you hear Patrick mm. Stewart's voice? <gasps> it's like the Charles well, Xavier's the from the reason comics. why oh. the reason why Wanda I think is so vital in this is not even necessarily because she's the main character but because she is the main connection to bringing all universes together to make the multiverse she is basically the plot not plot hole but the one who's who's basically patches it patch, being a patch yeah, uh, to all be, the what is the word the MacGuffin that's she might the be the MacGuffin, MacGuffin that's this. the word yeah. she's basically the, you could call it even the super glue to put it all in and, and bring whoosh, and, and catching it all together. So the thing is, I know there's some people say, oh, we just want all the old cast of X-Men. Well, you can't really do that yeah. because, I, not just because of the obvious. I mean, I mean, you know how much I love yeah, Patrick the 90s, Stewart. Like, oh, yeah. I love Patrick Stewart. Oh, yeah. I love uh, Hugh Jackman and all that. But in reality, it's time for, for them. And cast. they can even, yeah. it's just like what they're doing with the DC too is, uh, I love Michael Keaton. And I'm glad they're using him now because we've had enough of the other actors. But it's time in this case. You can show those characters, and it's great. You can see Hugh Jackman, all them, and see them go and hand it over to someone else. Yeah. You can well, literally see that. With this concept of the multiverse, and what we've seen established now with Spider Man is all these different versions of X Men, mm-hmm. just like the same with different versions of Spider Man, are now part of a different multiverse thing. Yeah. So you can you can play with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what, what I mean. all they can do. Because maybe what by seeing the yellow chair, are we maybe going to have like a 90s cartoon style X Men that are actually. That's what I want. Ooh. I want it, man. Ooh. I, I, I want the I'm night. turning to Ric Flair. Woo! Woo, baby, woo! But I want to see... Uh, let me tell you something, son. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> no, but I want to see... I want to see the X-Men style. Um, I want to see that. I want to see uh, the floating chair. Yeah. I want to see... I'm. I, hey, look, man, I'm old school. I don't mind saying it. I want to see the night. Not it doesn't have to be just like the cartoon, but I do want to see a different kind of um, uh, Cyclops and yeah. Wolverine. I want to see Wolverine with the ha- the uh, mask on. Sure, uh, because we've had Wolverine without the mask and yeah. all that. Um, and you can make the mask look good. I've seen fan films where they've done them, make them look and, good. And you know what else? He didn't have to wear it all the time. Yeah, but 
I would like to see him wearing the leather jacket, even with the kind of like the pilot thing. Oh it, it, man, it, you know what I'm saying, Bub? Yeah, <laughs> I want to see. It. There's so much we could say. There, so, I, I want to see it. I want to see all of it, man. Yeah. I, uh, give because the thing is, I can understand with the X Men the way it was in the year 2000. If it hadn't been for the X Men, people a lot of times like to give Blade the the credit, and it had its own thing. But X Men was the first big comic book. That yeah, the people, people knew who they were. Yeah, because Blade was kind of his own. I only knew private. who Blade was because he was in the Spider-Man, Spider-Man animated series. But the thing Hunting is, Hunting Morbius down. We're talking, and I don't, I knew about it mostly because of stuff like Comic Scene Wizard and yeah. stuff like that. Because they never seemed to get that character popular, and then Wesley Snipes, though being Wesley Snipes, oh, made it he was cool. good. But, yeah, but the, the truth is, is X Men was a big comic book. Yeah, title. it was. So. That was Marvel's first real big live action movie. They were trying to theaters. be somewhat serious, though, is so that they they did have them in tights and all that. Yeah. But and you don't. By the way, they don't have to be in tights just because it's it's colored or or because it's more like the comic. But I want to see, and it wasn't really till Avengers that they re. You know, I know Superman did it, but yeah. But it wasn't until the um, the Avengers that they said, hey, you know what? Screw what people think. For, pardon me. Forget what people think. It is a comic book. We're going to treat it like such. Yeah. That is what it is. And I respected it. Okay? I'm not, saying it has, I'm not saying it has to be as cornball as, as everything in the world. But you know what? I'm glad. I want to see the comics as they are. I want to see yeah. Ms. Yes Pizzolik on a Superman movie. I want to see that all that. That would be so cool. I, you know who would have been great? And he's gone now, but Gilbert Godfrey. I would have. Oh. He did the voice in the comic. Yeah, team. he did. I, I want to see Warwick Davis do it, actually. Oh. I want to I see that kind of stuff. And I yeah. want to see that stuff. That'd be great. Yeah. Oh, so much that could be done. Oh, I know it. But then there's the stuff that I don't want to see. Yes. And here's the next thing on the list. Now, people have been getting excited about this because it seems like they're almost matching the same universe as, say, Roger Rabbit. But this is not what I wanted from the return of Chippendale Rescue Rangers. What's the first thing that pops into your head when I say Chippendale? I bet it's these guys! But certainly the second would be those rascally cartoon chipmunks, Chip and Dale. What if I did something like... I am into nuts! (laughs) Good, good, I love it. Great stuff! Just want to remind you guys I'll be at FanCon this afternoon. Hey, watch out! I'm keeping myself fit and, you know, my updated modern look. Don't you think you'd have more fans here if Chip did these events with you? I hadn't thought about him in a while. I should give him a call. See how life's treating him. Life is the worst. Which is why you need good insurance. (laughs) A message on my landline. I don't like that. I know you're still mad about Rescue Rangers getting canceled, but I just got a call from the police and I need your help. I searched the perimeter. No clues. Why would there be? Six missing tunes in a month and not one clue. Oh, no! Chip! Dale, you look different. It's no secret I had the CGI surgery. What's been up with you? You know, this, that, other vague things to fill the space of this conversation. Cool. We can see what we can find out and then pass it along to the officer, but that's all we're gonna do. So you're saying the Rescue Rangers are back? Yes! <laughs> You two come poking around where you don't belong, and I can't have that. Run! I got him! What are you looking at? Honestly, your weird dead eyes. (laughs) Over here! Go get him! This is awesome! I was always more of an Alvin and the Chipmunks person. (laughs) You. Monster. It was like professional. <gasps> Same time. <gasps> Jinx, you, you owe me a non-brand specific cola. cola. What? <laughs> that was crazy. <gasps> Somebody <gasps> called get his book. <gasps> this is incredible. Oh, no, we lost it. May twentieth coming to Disney Plus. Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Not what I would have wanted from a movie. You know what? At actually. All. 
Actually, I'm I'm going to watch it. And um, the thing is, is I saw some you can that. review it. I don't think I can tolerate it. <laughs> There's some things about it that looks funny. One thing I saw in the preview that I thought I don't remember if it was on that one or not, but that I thought looked funny was while they were doing all that, they showed Paula Abdul in the background with that cat. Yeah, they're, well, they're, that's one of the things I guess is kind of creative, but it's they're 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 putting it into like almost the Roger Rabbit universe, and it, even there they have what's is his Roger face Rabbit? Seth McMar or Seth Rogen as Pumbaa there. The live action Pumba. You didn't realize that was Pumba. I didn't, I didn't look. You have see. a lot of different Disney characters being well, brought in, so it's 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 like you're in the universe. That's basically it's like a, in, within Roger Rabbit's universe. Well, uh, and let me let me read this synopsis sure. before we're talking about this. I don't want to talk about it long because oh god. In Chippendale Rescue Rangers, Chippendale are living amongst cartoons and humans in modern day Los Angeles, but their lives are quite different now. And it has been decades since their successful television series was canceled. And Chip Volsov Mulaney has to come to a life of suburban domesticity as an insurance salesman. Dale, voice of Sandberg, meanwhile has had CGI surgery and works the nostalgic convention circuit, desperate to relive his glory days. When a former castmate mysteriously disappears, Chip and Dale must repair their broken friendship and take on their Rescue Rangers detective personas once again to save. Their friend's life, and I have to agree. Where so one person said, "Like this movie can only be two things. This is going to be the worst train wreck you've ever seen, or it's actually going to turn out to have been brilliant, and yeah, we'll be surprised." I, I agree with the same thing. There's no middle road in this because it, it's it's clever in a kind of a wink, wink, hilarious. I didn't ex- ever expect seeing that. Yeah, but at the same time, I won't really take it as the old Chip and Dale yeah. cartoon. It's I don't. Th- at least I don't think of it as a reunion or anything like that. It's funny. I, I always liked Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, but yeah. it was- I didn't never liked it as much as I did Ducktales. And and to be honest, I never Ducktales was amazing. I never liked the redo of Ducktales. I the newest one. I didn't care for it much. Yeah, um, it, was, it was all right. I I, I, but, I didn't watch all of it, but I liked what I but, saw. But uh, but as far as this goes, I think it's funny if it's more of a jink, uh, a wink wink, just just kidding type of thing. Yeah. But as far as it being a redo, I don't think it would like that myself. Yeah, it's it's basically saying, oh no, the cartoon happened, but now see the actors have just gotten you know, it's kind of like uh, when you come back to Star Wars and suddenly the whole. Uh, Han and Leia romance has already fallen apart, and we're going to kill Han in the first movie. It's like that. Yeah. When you see Chip and Dale, like, oh, yeah, we've kind of split them up. And the Rescue Rangers wasn't a real thing for them. That was just a show they were both on. And you know, But they're going to have to do it for real now because somebody's going missing. And for crying out loud, Peter Pan has grown up and is the bad guy. Is that what we're yeah. seeing? <laughs> now, you knew I wasn't going to like that. I didn't even realize that's who it was supposed to be, to be honest with you. Yeah. You didn't realize he was wearing Peter Pan's hats and his clothes, no, but he's, all, he's grown up and he's a jerkwad. No, I didn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he looked like Elmer Fudd. <laughs> yeah, yeah kind of did. Here's something that I don't. I, I ah, some of the newer Star Trek I just can't. But I don't know. Chris, Captain Christopher Pike is uh, yeah. getting a series now. Star Trek: Strange New Worlds. Like Christopher Pike. But this is a continuation from Discovery. Apparently. Oh yeah, I'm not into that so much. Because apparently there's some crossover characters here, but. Sorry to interrupt. This is your captain. Our mission. I like the sound of it. To chart the stars. Push the boundaries of what is known. And what is possible. I'm standing on the surface of a comet. I love this job. people this crew i believe we can do anything you want to seek out new life go where the aliens are your presence is blasphemy let's talk about this find some comfort i think that went well perhaps we should kiss that seems logical Maybe we don't touch anything else. Just a suggestion. The whole future hangs in the balance. No one can know the future. One can only follow one's instincts. You're the best of Starfleet. Our ability to work together, that's our greatest strength. Let's show them what you got.
All right, so this starts May 5th. So by the time you're hearing this, it's probably about ready to roll. Uh, one thing that's kind of gone wrong with some modern Star Trek, first off, was you had J.J. Abrams making movies, and he wanted to make Star Wars movies. Yeah, that's what he wanted to do. And Paramount, now with having their own streaming services, making as much Star Trek as they can, but they're doing it with the sensibilities of Star Wars movies. And it just doesn't feel like Star Trek anymore. No, it doesn't. But I, I'm going to watch this. I, I, I try to watch Discovery. I've tried to watch it. I've I, tried to watch Picard, and I still can't get into it. I like I'm Picard trying. because even though it, it isn't as good as the old, I do like Picard pretty good. I don't like all the stuff they put in it, obviously. Yeah. But um, language and such. But I can handle it, it, it much better than I can discover it. it <laughs> I just can't get into it. It's just yeah. too woke for me. And, there, and all the stuff they're doing, like Lower Decks, like we needed a parody animated series that's actually supposed to be in the Star Trek world, and then they, they're making a kid's show, and I don't know how that's going to have turned out. But I, I don't want a kid's show for them, but I just, <sighs> I, I'm not going to watch them all just because it's not my thing. Yeah. But, but, uh, they're making so much Star Trek, they're just, just trying to fill up space, and it's just, I don't know, I feel like they're not. You mean the Final Frontier? <laughs> they're just not making good Star Trek yeah. anymore. And like, I miss Gene Roddenberry now, you know? Yeah, I'm, um, I like, somehow it's like they've missed the point somewhere. It just doesn't feel right. But I, I, uh, I do like Picard pretty good, and I, I just can't get into Discovery. I just can't do it. I tried. Yeah. I really did. Yeah, and I, I've heard Picard's gotten kind of an agenda filled at points and stuff. Yeah, I'm like, it has. And it's you know, I, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm now on my third attempt to try to watch the first season. Yeah, but it's like it's I don't know something's missing. Um, but yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to take the show down. But I wanted to at least acknowledge that it was happening. Something else, though, I'm still pretty excited for. But uh, as I was talking to like James Kennison, because he's a huge Buzz Lightyear fan, like this, if they get this wrong, it's going to break my heart. I'm afraid of not liking this movie because I'm so, I'm excited what this could be. So here we go. But we got an official trailer too for Lightyear. Please be a good movie. That looks like ET ship, I swear. Log, Stardate 3901. After a full year of being marooned, our first hyperspeed test flight is a go. Who are you talking to? Uh, no one. <laughs> you were narrating again. I was not. Just doing the mission log. You do know no one ever listens to those. I know that. Narrating helps me focus. Ready, Captain Lightyear? Ready as I'll ever be, Commander Hawthorne. This is exciting. A new adventure. I'm going to grant you four minutes to be off planet, but then you come right back to us. To infinity. And beyond. You are clear for hyperlaunch. Beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. Buzz, that was utterly terrifying, and I regret having joined you. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear to Star Command. Come in, Star Command. Why don't they answer? Hey, hey! Shh! The robots. The what? What is happening right now? Alicia? Oh, no. That's my grandmother. But, Socks, how long were we gone? Meow, 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 meow. 62 years, seven months, and five days. What? I hope you're ready for action, because all we needed was a pilot. For what? To destroy the alien ship. I have a plan, and I have a team. Darby can take any three things and make them explode. I do this, and they shave a little time off my sentence. Okay. And what about you? Well, I thought this was going to be like a fun boot camp workout thing. <laughs> but it is not. <laughs> Did I get it? Pretty close. <laughs> I need the, you know what's saying? The harpoons? Buzz! Buzz, right here! <laughs> the probability of survival with an inexperienced crew is 38.2%. Hmm, seems a bit low. Mission failure imminent in three. Grandma always said she believed in you, too. One. There was a big swirly do. Oh, I think I need a bag. No, no. Please record your last words. Do not vomit inside the vehicle. Do not vomit inside the vehicle. If you are satisfied with this recording, speak or select uh. one. To infinity. Are you trying to get me to pull your finger? Don't fall for it. No, not like that. Uh, sorry, it's a thing your grandma and I used to do. Yeah. June 17th. I hope that is going to be fantastic. I want it to be so good. I want it to be so good. But I, I'm nervous that what if they goofed it up? What if they did something silly with it? And well, hopefully it's good. We'll see. Right now, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Isn't this the plot of Buck Rogers? Well, it's kind of a Buck Rogers-ish thing. Yeah. It's, it's got that style. I mean, it's... So, if, if, if they didn't make a fantastic movie out of this idea, I'd, I'll be so disappointed. 
Because this this has potential to be like oh, so much fun. Well, just a little over a month. And you'll yeah, find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm excited, but I'm also extremely nervous. You know, because I'm like, I, I, I'm. I, I'm not as big a Buzz Lightyear fan as like James Kennison as that story show is, but I, he was like my favorite character in the first movie because Tim Allen is so funny as that character. And I was disappointed when I first heard about it that it didn't get Tim Allen, but I, I do love Chris Evans though too, and I think he's doing a really phenomenal job from what I'm hearing. June seventeenth and yeah. beyond. So uh, I just hope that this is as good as I want it to be, and that I'm going to be just loving every minute of it because I really want to love it. I will I, say this: I hope the, they don't mess up. The graphics are amazing. Yeah, well, of course it's Pixar. Pixar yeah, always makes amazing looking. Oh, but man. Pixar has shown me that they can now make movies that I'm disappointed in. Oh yeah. So and I normally I'm just I'm just on board with every Pixar movie, but now I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. But I, this looks so much fun that I'm yeah. like, oh, please be as much fun I, as I, I hope it is. Yes. It's so cute. Meow, 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 I want meow. a toy of the cat. Oh, I it's totally adorable. need a toy of the cat. Well, in your house, especially with the cats you have and yeah. everything. Yeah. I can, I can see your wife liking that. <laughs> but something else coming up at the end of the week, Saturday. Yes. Is free comic book day, May 7th of 2022. Now, uh, if you go to freecomicbookday.com, you can look up and try to find a local comic shop nearby you that is participating. You might want to call. If you have a shop you regularly go and you don't find it listed here, give them a call. I did. I had to do that with one shop that I didn't think was it was listed here that they were participating. And I did contact them on Facebook. And they said, oh, no, we're, we're going to be participating like we do every year. So, But, uh, okay, here's – let me go through some of the lists of some of the stuff you can get for free. Here's the gold level stuff. Uh, you've got uh, some Buffy the Vampire Slayer. There's some sort of Archie thing where it's a. Uh, they've been doing like a, I think you were talking. There's like three different Archies now. There's yeah, like three, a grown four, up. Yeah. There's the kids, and then there's there's the serious Archie. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then there's well, another one. I, I, classic. I love the classic Archie. I mean, you know me. I'm old school. I can't even read this other one. But there's also another one that uh, it's uh, like a three different things. It's Dog Man, Cat Kid, and Captain Underpants. Oh yeah. There is of course is a Doctor Who comic, which normally I grab those, but I don't know who in the world. Uh, I heard there was going to be a new Doctor. I don't know if this woman on the front is the new Doctor. But I haven't paid attention to Doctor Who in now in years. Uh, we've got I can't read the, that one. Something called Primus. There, there's an Amazing Spider-Man here. Cool. It's Amazing Spider-Man Venom number one. So are they giving them a book together? Because uh, oh, here's something I don't know if you've heard about this one. Let me bring this up. The guy over at GameStop was telling me. Uh, I guess this happened during the big event because Carnage is like a symbiote god now. Oh, really? But uh, Eddie Brock was somehow granted some sort of cosmic power by some somebody who had died and Eddie Brock was given the, this major power and he was asked what form he wanted to take with his power and the only form he really knew was Venom. So he's in a form of Venom where he's got glowing orange eyes and a glowing oh. orange spider but he was able to summon Mjolnir and the Silver Surfer's surfboard and combine them together in some sort of giant axe and then will fight symbiotes apparently. Ooh boy. Uh, yeah, that's boy. They're getting really over the top and extreme on some crazy, Honestly. complicated things. So I'm like, I don't know how, what I think about that. I'll say this though: that look would be very good at Halloween. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, I miss the '90s. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then of course, Star Horse has got a Stranger Things comic that we'll get to see. That it looks like they're mixing it with Re- it says Stranger Things Resident Alien, and Dark Horse is actually the ones who created. Have you watched Resident Alien? It's pretty. So. It's pretty good. Alan Tudyk is an oh, alien I, I, on her. I, I did watch a couple. Episodes. It's a pretty funny show. It's pr- I like it, but it's it's based off a Dark Horse comic. But I guess they're combining that in with a Stranger I didn't Things know comic. That, that it was based off that. Looks like they're looks almost like a re release of the first issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I don't know, huh? But there's some sort of Ninja Turtles thing that might also be where they're going to bring back Venus. You know, from the live action I television remember. series, they're going to they're making her an official female turtle now in the you comics. Know, that doesn't bother me. I actually, so, I actually liked that character. Uh, then we've got some silver level. We've got, of course, anyone who's an Airbender fan. There's an Avatar comic. Uh, some sort of a Marvel Judgment Day thing that I will be looking forward to getting. Uh, just to see what's going on. Uh, a Bloodborne comic. A Donald Duck comic, which oh, looks like you know that's a must it style. looks like it's uh, some more reprints. Oh, I love it. I, I love, love it. I love Duck, it. I love yeah. it. Something called Clementine. Fuzzy Baseball. Uh, just trying to see what some of this. Electric Black Children. Enemies. Uh, Equilibrium. Uh, it won't always be like this sampler, okay? There's a lot of indie comics getting some stuff. There's another thing from Marvel called Marvel's Voices. Uh, that sounds woke, doesn't it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I don't know about this one. 
Some sort of Max Meow. I was going to say, what is that? Oh, look, a Neverlander's preview. I guess I should look at that. Yeah, that's right up your alley. There's this Red Sonia that looks like they're reprinting some Red Sonia. Oh, that's uh, cool. Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Street Fighter. Oh, I usually have picked up uh, Sonic some Sonic Hedgehog. and some, and some Street Fighter comics I've grabbed. Nephew there, yeah. Yeah. A Three Stooges comic. Oh, that, no, that it's up my alley. Yeah. Uh, Guardian of Fukushima, I think, which I think is might be based off in there a Samurai Fukushima. I don't know, it's a video like game. That. I don't know, uh, but yeah, a lot of different kind of things available and uh, lots of fun things over at your local comic store. Uh, and I guess I've already mentioned all the weird things that Marvel is doing that I'm like, I don't know that I, I will you go quit missing this Spider Man and Mary Jane and skinning people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But there we go. So that is what we're excited about. We will probably have a show next week because we will talk. Well, I'm going to try to bring a recorder with me to Free Comic Book Day so we can talk about what we grab and what we see. And, of course, we will go see Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness and have some plenty of fun things to say about that as well. But we got to wrap this up. So, uh, oh, you know what? I should have some new reviews. I should have looked it up. Um, I should. Have, I didn't look up my reviews. I, I was paying attention, but that's okay. Let's just wrap this thing up here. Uh, well, I got some thank yous though. I want to give out, of course, to Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite. Uh, he's actually had a guest on that I'm going to try to get on. Uh, you'll love what this guy is doing in Tucson, Arizona. This guy, you know, this guy's awesome. Uh, so I'm looking forward to hopefully having him on in the near future when we don't already have pre-planned what I've got going on. Uh, also, Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite Mall Show. All three of them have helped contribute to the opening of the show. Don't don't forget you can email us at podcast at neverlandpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at NeverlandPcast, Facebook.com slash Neverland Podcast. We also have a Facebook group, which is Facebook.com slash groups slash Neverland Podcast. I hope our voicemail still works, 816-226-6492. And remember, of course, you can officially join the Neverlanders on our website by becoming official Lost Boy or Pixie. Why do we have Pixies? Because girls are too clever. They don't get lost. You just have to choose yourself mm-hmm. a nickname. We haven't really leaned on that in a long time. It's been a while since I've gotten that. And, uh, don't forget you can donate to us through uh, our Patreon uh, of course patreon.com slash Neverland Podcast you will find links to all this stuff on our website NeverlandPodcast.com if you just look on that nice little menu I have there kind of midway right after the banner you'll find our shop you'll find links to Patreon you'll find links to the actual podcast links to subscribe links to also find out my podcast reviews I have a nice little picture there if you click on that you can save a lot of money by finding a way to look at all your reviews all in one place and then we'll email it to you which I should have a new I don't know if I got my email I haven't looked here but I think I had a new review that popped up this week I need. I, I should have like I said I should have looked it up I should have alright but yes uh, so if you happen to have a podcast my podcast reviews if you click through my links I get a little bit of a kickback for that I do appreciate it and for just a low low price every year and you have subscription you can get this as a really great great little service but now okay you know this is I know this is your favorite part of the show now get lost in an adventure! Uh, Philip loves that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs>